All right. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming to this session today. Um, really great to see some familiar names and faces and some folks that I don't know as well. So I'll do a quick introduction to myself and then the topic, and we'll get into it. So my name is Lee Griffin. I am an engineering manager um, for the, what we know as the CPE team, which is the Community Platform Engineering Team. We'll hear a little bit more about the team in a couple of minutes. But they work exclusively in the community, and they're an open source facing team. And that's where this idea came to me to do a talk on how our team tries to serve the community. I'm not saying we're perfect, and uh, not saying we're there, and we're definitely on the journey. And I see Sarah Finn um, in the virtual audience there. So Sarah is our agile practitioner. So a lot of this um, goodwill and ideas and implementation details are down to her energy, her drive, and her passion. So thank you very much, Sarah, um, from the team as well as from the communities. So. I want to kick into it um, and just give a little bit of background about the team. So the CPE team, um, we have two communities that we serve. We serve the Fedora community and the Centre West community. And we've got this fantastic logo that was created by Mo Duffy, um, one of the Fedora community members for us, which um, if you're into symbolism and, and into design, you can see elements of the logos from both Fedora and Centre West in there and a bridge um, from a unification perspective. So it's a very cool logo that we have. But the team has a very broad remit. Um, we deal with the system administration uh, of the infrastructure that is used to effectively build um, and release the Fedora and the CentOS operating systems. But we're much more than just an operating systems house. Um, we manage the pipelines, which we know as release engineering, to help packages flow into the system for release time. And we manage a huge suite of services, over 100 at last count, which enables our community and enables the success of their applications and their interactions within both Fedora and CentOS. On top of that, we don't just maintain things, we try our best to add value. As a good Agile team, adding value is exactly what you wanna do. So we proactively engage with our communities and we build out initiatives and their new service offerings or enhancements on existing offerings that are out there that will hopefully make people's lives easier and bring some form of value to the wider ecosystems that we work in. I wanna talk briefly about the open source um, intersection. So this is actually becoming a norm across the industry and you're attending an open source dominated conference. So I don't need to go into too much detail about why open source, but more and more enterprise teams are slowly coming to the realization that there is communities out there that are working with technologies that are part of their stack. There's also very robust technology stacks out there, which means the enterprise doesn't have to develop every single piece of the pie, and they can take various slices from various communities and focus on their value add and their unique selling um, point from that. Now, this should be a symbiotic relationship, so the community should get as much value as the enterprise-driven teams from this. That's not always the case, and, and that's just um, how some of these communities plan out but the benefits can be huge. And I've pulled a, a really great article and a, and a shameless plug for opensource.com here. And um, there's some fantastic blogs and content on it. And this talks about the enterprise open source advantages, but I've kind of enhanced some of the key words, which I feel resonate with me from an agile perspective, faster time to market, crowdsourcing, transparency, merit-based. They're all things that most agile teams strive for. And here you got a community doing this day in, day out. So there's a very natural intersection point for me, um, speaking from an agile perspective, and now more teams are starting to discover this. And the whole point of this um, talk, I suppose, is to show you some of the changes that you might have to make to your flavor of agile um, to leverage these opportunities and to enhance the offering that you'll ultimately deliver to your customers. What really struck me a couple of years ago is the value alignment. And anybody who's seen me present before would have seen this slide several times. So apologies for the reuse. Um, Red Hat has a very strong values driven um, approach. Most teams do. It seems to be the norm of the industry and it helps define your culture really. And if you take Agile, and I'm focusing on Scrum here because it is one of the most prevalent from a software engineering perspective and, and they have value statements out there for it. And if you take opensource.com's values, um, which kind of manifest themselves as the wider open source values, you'll see steel threads running through them. You'll see they talk about freedom, openness, and open exchange across all three. 
commitment appears word for word in two of them. Red Hat is actually founded on a meritocracy, and that's pretty much what open source is about. And what you have there is what we call a frictionless environment. As a team, you don't want your team's processes and your team's values to be at odds with anything else, be it other teams, be it the company, um, or be it the tooling in the communities that you're using. When you have this steel thread running through, that gives a really unique experience because everybody appreciates why we're trying to work this way and it level sets the values across the board. So people effectively speak the same language. And this was eye opening for me. Um, and when I had the opportunity in Red Hat to move internally to an open source centric team, this is primarily what attracted me to it. It attracted me at a values um, point of view. Now, Agile is all about teamwork. Uh, I often call it the continuous integration kind of tool chain um, at a software perspective. But at an actual Agile perspective, we continuously want to be improving. We want to continuously plan, innovate, integrate, deliver, and get better as a team. Now, all of this mindset is really what good engineers and teams strive for. So this isn't anything unique about Agile. But open source doesn't change that, and that can scare some teams that are going to try and open their processes and try and do more things in the open. I can't do my planning how we always do it. I can't innovate um, as freely because customer secrets will get out there. A lot of people familiar with Scrum will often hear this is Scrum but. This is almost Agile but. We're, we're Agile, but we can't do all the things we normally do because we're now working in the community. To me, it magnifies it because you have a ready and willing an exceptionally passionate user base that want to innovate, that want to work with your tools and your teams, that want to benefit from your delivery and equally want to improve at an individual level as well as at the collective project level, um, which is fantastic. So there's no issue um, from your day-to-day -day teamwork values and what you put time and energy into when you transition into an open source facing team. So one of the first things that we had to do as a team when we really started to gather together and put a path and a plan forward um, for us, we needed to define our scope and our mission. Now, this is particularly true at a, a team level, but in communities, they're absolutely huge. Uh, people associate Fedora with just the operating systems. And I'm paraphrasing Matthew Miller here, the Fedora project lead. When he talks about Fedora, he talks about it as a collection of people and services all coming together with open source at heart. And that means the community can be huge and your interaction point might be a very narrow sliver within that community. So by you defining your mission and sticking to it, that helps the community have clarity about what your role is. We regularly get requests for items outside of our scope. We absolutely consider them, we absolutely engage but we know there's no ownership on us to go ahead and work with that idea or try and fix that issue. And from a team perspective, that creates a very safe environment. And I'm not going to talk about psychological safety after the, the last call, which is fantastic, by the way. But that clarity for the team, it helps them in a very public manner. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about some of maybe the more negative aspects that the teams experience in open source. But having this defined scope and mission it provides huge clarification for everyone. And that was really the beginning of our journey. And we shared that journey through blog posts with the communities. So everyone understood who we were, what we were, and what our identity was, which was hugely important. Now, you need to work together in any relationship. So this can be any stakeholders, let alone community-facing stakeholders. Now, the difficulty with a community is, it is a collection of individuals who all have very strong opinions, and like anybody with very strong opinions, we rarely agree. But what you'll find in communities is their structure set up to enable the communities to grow and to thrive. Fedora and CentOS have governing bodies. Uh, in Fedora, it's a council, and CentOS is a board, and they have different meanings and different mechanics behind them. But effectively, they become the voice for the overall project at a steering committee kind of level. You also have community of practices. And this is really where your team needs to identify who their stakeholders are, because you cannot identify every single individual user in the community as a stakeholder with an equal voice. You want to try and group them. You want to try and get a singular voice coming through to avoid the noise and avoid the confusion. And of course, you want to evolve them. You don't want them on the periphery 
um, you want to try and get them involved as many of your activities, include them on the right communications and make them feel part of your agile framework. Now your stakeholders generally should be expressing to your team their needs in the form of what you want and why you want it. So really value proposition for investing your team's um, finite resources into a project. And what's really great about open source communities, they rarely come with the business pressure of a paying customer saying, and I need this by this date. So the when aspect is rare. Sometimes it happens if they want to try and leverage an opportunity. And of course, you're willing to work with that. But given the team that freedom that they don't feel under pressure to deliver immediately or on a very tight time scale actually allows them enhance their agile processes and allows them worry about delivering when it's ready rather than when the date was set for them in the sand. Now, open source is a very communication heavy um, experience. Prepare for a lot of emails. Multiple email lists um, are the norm in open source communities for development, for infrastructure, for all of those SIGs and subgroups that I mentioned earlier. You need to be on them. You need to be listening, but set up good filters and watch for your keywords and watch for your interactions. You will learn a lot passively from just observing and you will gain a lot of valuable feedback about your team, your product, your interactions, um, and the perception of you and the team. And a little tip, Get inline, abide by their style. Uh, so emails uh, in open source go with the inline style, which when you get used to it becomes fantastic. Um, and then you try to mail people who don't get it and it becomes very confusing. Um, IRC is predominantly um, the approach to instant messaging communication within communities. Now Discord and other applications are starting to gain traction, but IRC provides records of the chat that people can refer to. And all of this emails and all of this IRC is set up for asynchronous communication because people who are involved in open source communities, they have day jobs, their parents, um, they have outside lives and they can't commit to being on a keyboard responding within a couple of minutes, which is why IRC and emails are their de facto means of communicating. Issue trackers are something that the community use when they're trying to fix bugs or raise issues or get a resolution to an ongoing task. And this is something that your team has to start focusing on. Um, worry about manual syncing later, because I do understand the power of JIRA. I am an absolute fan of JIRA um, and some of the other tools, but the community aren't. And I'll explain why in a moment, why they're not such a fan of tools like that. Um, we also try to use the open decision framework. So the open decision framework is a great way to scope your communications and help involve the community in why a decision has been made. This is really, really important. Um, we tried it and we done our best with the open decision framework and we made mistakes and we learned from it. And that's a great agile journey um, to mess things up and move yourself forward and try and learn from it again. But the community respected um, the intent of using the open decision framework. Perhaps the execution didn't match it, but if you become an open team and you want that level of feedback at Odyssey, the ODF is something you should definitely consider. Realigning your tooling. So every good agile team and every strong manager or program or project manager or the other um, hierarchical roles that want to get a pulse on where your project are, they have a set of tools they want to use. Um, Internally in Red Hat, we have Jira, we have Google Docs, we have Google Meet, and they're all fantastic ways to communicate, track projects, um, and asynchronously share information across the organization. A lot of those are closed door tools though. They're behind VPNs, they're unable to be accessed by the community. So one thing we had to look at was ditching a lot of those tools where we could and where it made sense. And I'm not saying throw everything out, there's times when you do want to work on Google Docs. There's times when you do need to have a quick Google Meet um, or BlueJeans or whatever other voice comms you're using. So we looked at taking a public Taiga instance, which is a, an open source version of an issue tracker. We use HackMD for sharing notes um, collaboratively with the community. Some of our teams use Jitsi, which is a free open source um, uh, web conference software. And you might have noticed a trade and a commonality there. They're all open source tools. 
the community in open source, um, in the open source world, really respect and love the fact that we try to use open source where we can. Uh, this is ubiquitous across most open source communities, and they will respect that you are trying to engage with the philosophy, the mindset, and the approach by compromising on the functionality. Tiger versus Jira, there's no comparison in terms of what Jira gives you as an enterprise grade tool. That comes with a massive cost, as anyone who's um, had to pay a bill for Jira will know. You take the hit on the functionality, but does that matter? That's entirely up to your team. And, and I'll, I'll leave you mull on that with the, the quote from the um, Agile Manifesto about individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So we try and open our communication lines to the community. Um, we do run our team meetings through IRC. We run backlog refinements, bug discussions. Some teams do daily standoffs asynchronously through IRC. And that means the community can dip in and dip out. And like I mentioned earlier, with time zones and with people having personal lives and professional lives, and then the intersection there is the, the open source world, um, they can dip in and read a meeting that happened eight hours ago or eight days ago and still in the same context and still be able to respond and engage with our team. We do a weekly email roundup to the community. Uh, we show them what we worked on. We invite comments. We try and get a sense of progression as the work is going through. And hopefully we will get some kind of responses on it. What's really interesting here is we ran a survey recently and people said that the emails were one of the most valuable mechanisms we had to communicate. Yet week on week, we might get zero comments or one comment on it. And you start to doubt, is this the right way to communicate? But that's a lesson learned in the volume of emails that come into um, an open source mailing list. Not every mail is going to get a response, but people do read them, they do process them, and they absolutely do appreciate them coming in. You need to allow the community to discover you and your team. Um, the information that you share is hugely important because you want to root in. You want the community to be able to communicate with you, find you, discover you, work with your projects and track you. So wiki pages, usually popular for communities. They might seem a bit antiquated for enterprise grade teams, um, but usually important for the community. It's the first place I go to when I'm looking for new information and um, before pinging people on IRC. Twitter has emerged as a huge communication vehicle for open source communities. So get social, go to where your community interacts. Um, I follow a lot of the community contributors, they follow me, and it is great to see their insight, great to see what they're thinking about, great to see their perception of our team. And the last point here is something we're only starting to think about recently, it's humanizing the team. It's very easy for open source communities to criticize the corporate culture, the corporate team. Very difficult to criticize people as individuals. Everybody in our team is trying their absolute level best. Nobody gets up, goes to work or work from home as we're all doing now, to try and cause harm or annoyance to anybody in the community. Sure, we're doing things and building things people don't agree with, or they try and do it differently. But like I said earlier, opinions are, are out there. Everybody has one, and we need to be able to communicate and deal with them and work through those opinions. But we're now starting to try and humanize our team, and then we're going to try a couple of experiments in the coming weeks to record small segments of some of our meetings and make them available. So people see us, they know the person and the face and the voice behind um, the email moniker that goes out there. Now, I did mention the mailing list multiple times and it's showing the importance of them, but you can't just be in read only mode. Get involved, even if it's encouragement, even if it's a plus one on an idea. Um, if you can, default to open where the topic is not sensitive. If you're talking about an architectural decision or how to resolve a bug, why would you do that behind closed doors? Why would you do that on one of your internal mailing lists when you could open it? and possibly involve the community who might come up with an idea, who might have an opinion on it. And even if they don't, you've made the effort. You've opened that transparency aspect to them. Now, this is one of the slightly negative sides of it. You're going to get negative comments. This is life. You're going to get somebody that doesn't agree with what you're doing, and they won't be long about telling you about it. Um, it's generally not at a personal level, which is why I mentioned the humanizing aspect um, a few minutes ago but you're never gonna satisfy everybody. And in one sense, you have to grow a thick skin, 
but in another sense you want to engage not at a, a tit for tat kind of verbal sparring with someone but you want to try and get to the root cause of what the negativity is you want to help understand where they're coming from and that can be a kind of coaching exercise for people involved in that capacity and um, you can jump on irc sometimes the written word is awful for trying to interpret people's real intent and we've had some community members jump on a call with us when we had some tricky conversations and within five minutes we clarified the intent that's just one of the the more negative aspects but this happens in every team and unfortunately you're going to encounter it and just knowing that will arm you with the right tools now i'm not expecting people to to read the initiative flow that we have there but you'll see it's a flow you'll see it's a flow based diagram there's decision points there's entry points on it um, and what we want to really focus on here is allowing the community to have an input to your backlog to be able to suggest an initiative for consideration community members will fall into really two camps there's the camp that want to get items fixed your typical bugs your problems your annoyances and they're very easy to deal with because they're often just in time and there's something that the team consume naturally as part of their work. But an initiative in our world is a commitment um, in about a three month window. We do quarterly planning and we try and work six weeks ahead of ourselves. So we know what we're going to plan roughly for Q1 next year. We'll know that in kind of late October, early November kind of time. That gives the community a chance to see the capacity of our team to see what we have coming forward, to look at our roadmap, to look at existing initiatives, and more importantly, it gives them a clear route into us. And we involve the community as much as we can in that. We haven't got a huge volume coming from the community, but we get massive feedback on in-flight initiatives that we're running, and we're hoping over the next year that we'll get more community involvement and ideas for consideration going to us. And again, it's the intent. You're opening your doors and you're welcoming this level of involvement. We do need to check the temperature regularly. Um, we've ran two surveys, and it's something we're going to try and do maybe once every two to three months. We go on mail threads, we go on IRC, we attend conferences that the community attend. And this is all designed to almost run a retrospective in the open without calling it a retrospective. We want to get that feedback and that perception because otherwise we're living in a vacuum and patting ourselves on the back. We want to make sure that we're doing our level best for the community and not doing something that is causing more harm than good. And by doing this frequently, we have the chance to course correct. Our most recent survey, we pulled at least 10 data points from it, which are now being worked through our own internal backlog for improvements that we're going to make going forward. And this is what a good Agile team does. And that should not change from a stakeholder perspective. It just changes from the volume of stakeholders and individuals we want to deal with because these surveys are aimed at the individual contributor level. We definitely do it with stakeholders. We do that more uh, in depth in a more formal retrospective, but this is a chance for every voice to matter. And if we're annoying one or two people, it can become a trend. And that's something we want to try and nip into bud as soon as we can. Now, I mentioned earlier about the, the mutually beneficial um, approaches. So the community should get some value from an enterprise grade team that has X number of developers working a 40 hour week, which is hopefully gonna to transition to some value for the community. And here's some of the value that we've um, observed and that we've had commented back to us from the communities. They receive much more focused deliverables. So they're going to see the benefit of putting five or six engineers on a piece of tightly bound work that will deliver that promised value at the end of it. The previous model that we had in our team was individuals working on a lot of siloed projects, which was fantastic. We almost became omnipresent by the fact we were moving 20, 30, 40 things at once. And that's just one or two individuals in, in that example. Um, but this focus means we can get more complex features out. We can get more resilient um, deliverables, which ultimately is a quality output that is going to be um, appreciated by the community. Now, communities in general have their own vision. They have their own focus and their own goal. And as an Agile team, we're all about visions and we understand the importance of that. But by having this dedicated team and having proposals come in, we can shortcut a lot of the 
organic growth that would need to take place for a community to achieve a milestone along their vision goal. So us putting six engineers into a piece of work for three months could shortcut something by 12 months or longer, which is fantastic from a community perspective. And the last point is about stronger collaboration and a deeper sense of association with the project. So open source developers have a very strong um, relationship with the project. They're really associated with it. They identify themselves as a Fedorian or, or words to that effect. When you have a team that is constantly investing their time and constantly delivering and moving that vision statement forward and adding value, the community reciprocate that and they want to come back and work with you on bug fixes, on feedback, on giving you the tools for your team to succeed and move forward because ultimately it helps the project. And that creates a tighter association with the project, which will hopefully lead to longer retention within the project's domain. And this should be obvious, but it is a journey. Um, we're not just changing how our team works at an agile level, we're changing the habits that have been brought up and ingrained for several years in the open source community. Well, and we're trying to do this in the open, which means there's a spotlight on us and that brings its own pressures and its own um, unique challenges uh, with it as well. You're also trying to change the community's perception of your team. Now, Red Hat has been very lucky as a, a sponsor um, and a guide really for Fedora for many years and, and similarly with CentOS. But that's not going to be the case for every enterprise team engaging with this. The community might be very wary of your team, especially if your team and your enterprise is monopolizing the community and making a lot of dollars out of it. So you have to work on the community's perception of your team, your product, um, and your overall company. But for me, this has been a very um, enlightening experience about the flavor of Agile that has emerged within the team. It's almost a purer form because it's done in a transparent and an open way. And that can give very raw feedback, but ultimately it will enhance the mental agility that a lot of teams struggle to achieve. Most teams get mechanically agile very, very quickly. They can follow the process. They can follow the guardrails. They can do all the things the book or their scrum master or their, their coach tells them to do, but they don't get it up here. They don't get it in their head. And this open source way of doing it, I firmly believe is starting to change the mindset of our team, as well as giving appreciation for the community for what agile is and isn't. And that everybody is the end of my presentation. That's my email address and I'm on Twitter and I'm quite happy to take people's comments in the chat as we go. And please don't all rush at once with your first question. <laughs> Scroll back through the chat in case I missed anything. Okay, um, if people don't have questions, I'm happy just to stay here on the chat. If people do want to connect with me one-on-one -on -one or, as I said, email me or, or hit me on Twitter. And hey, thanks everyone for your time and attention. Great to present to you. I hope you got something from it. Um, I do have the YouTube link, which I can drop into the channel as well, because I did pre-record this. Um, before it. So I'll drop it into the channel if folks want to look at it as well. And I'll see everyone around. Enjoy the rest of DevConf.